This is a heartbreaking sight. It's Kaiwangwari. Kaiwangwari is the second largest slum in Africa. It's connected to the largest one called Kibera. This is the place where no one wants to be, and yet a lot of people live here that can never figure out how to get out. A slum is a place of open sewerage, refuse everywhere, little tin shanties owned by slum lords that a person lives in for a few shillings a month. Most of the time they sleep on the dirt. It's always a dirt floor. Sometimes they get a piece of cardboard, sometimes a thin little piece of cloth or mattress. Mothers and fathers trying to figure out how to get off of the ground in their little six by six room so that they can try to stay a little bit dry. It's during the dry season, a time where the ground becomes so dry it begins to crack apart. Nothing grows, nothing's green. It's hard to get any kind of food and they live in famine and they literally are dying of thirst. None of them have water in their place. None of them have electricity in their place. As a matter of fact, they have to walk distances so that they can get some water. And most of the time it's from a well that's not deep enough to be clean. And that's why everybody stays sick so much because of the, the skin irritations and the parasites and the sickness and death that's carried through the water they drink. Every day is a tough day. It's life in Kawangwari slum. Our goal is to see the slum pushed back. That's what we've been working on here at the Hope Center. The piece of property we had was affectionately known as Hell's Hole. It was the place where kids would come and many times were molested. It's the place where refuse was thrown. It was the place where drugs were sold. It was the place where the drunkard slept. It was the place where the thief stayed and sometimes the bodies of victims were laying. It was Hell's Hole. But a few years ago, we took the Hell's Hole over and it has become something different. It's now known as the Center of Hope. Hope Center, where hope is alive. We're pushing the slum back. It's interesting standing here in the middle of this field. It's about the middle of our complex. And I guess it's a good thing to say that this is kind of the center of hope. It's just the story of what happens here. We go into the slum and we pull in children and we pull in teens and we pull in moms and dads and young people and we reach them for Christ. We care for them, we show them we love them. Here are kids that live in a slum that's full of disease. They don't get food like this. So we push back the slum by having them not only here in our school but we give them a good meal every day. They'll eat a meal by the end of today. They'll go home so that they're full and they're nourished and they're blessed because of that gift. We have medical clinics. In our medical clinics, we, we treat all of the kids who are here in the school, but we treat hundreds and really thousands of people out in the slum and try to give them an opportunity to overcome the common diseases that can be so easily remedied with just a little care, a little love, pushes back the slum, makes a difference. How do we reach out into that slum? How do we push the slum back? Well, I think the greatest evidence of it is helping these kids. Uh, this is Naomi, she has seven sisters, one brother, nine kids in the family. And here they have a chance to be in our Christian school and as a result of that, they're gonna get an education. That's how we pull them from the slum. That's how we make a difference in their life. Every one of these little first graders, their life is different because they have a chance now to get an education. That's how World Hope is reaching and making a difference. You look out on the fields and you see the sports programs. Sports, we found, is one of the greatest ways to pull kids in and get their attention and let them know we care and we love them and we have sports programs. Over a thousand kids in the sports programs. This past Saturday, there were 425 children that came up for Awanas and they laughed and they ran in circles and they memorized the Word of God. We're pulling them, we're reaching them and pulling them from the slum by caring for them. Hope Church, that's the place where people hear about Jesus, where families are being raised in the Lord, where they fellowship together and God's building His church. It's an incredible thing. Last Sunday morning, over 300 visitors in the church services. And that can happen all the time because there are people that are saying, we're not gonna just tell you we love you, we're gonna show you we love you. That's how we push the slum back, to care for people. 
and then they begin to grow. They grow in the school, they grow in all of the ministries here. From Christian who came here as a Burundi refugee to see if he could play on our football team. And he became a leader here as he grew in the Lord. And now Christian's going to another country as a missionary of world hope. And, and we're raising up pastors and we're raising up teachers. One of our young girls that came to our ministry early on has already now gone through college and is now a teacher in our Christian school. We're raising them up. We're multiplying now and we're going to send these world changers out all around the world. We're not just reaching into Kalanguari slum and pushing the slum back and seeing lives change there. We're changing the world right here from the Center of Hope. All of us working together make ministry happen. We need your help today. We are World Hope. Together, we can push back the slum. Let's make a difference in this place. Let's let, let it not be known as the second largest slum in Africa. Let's let it become known as the place where hope is alive.